Hello, Tube Dwellers, and welcome back to Heart of the Swarm. How would you like some first-person content? Okay, well, here you go. Jupiter will be my opponent. The CD Protoss Lout. Of course, I'll be playing the Zerg pieces. Jupiter will be Protoss, Protoss, Protoss. Protoss versus Zerg on Belshir Vestige. This is a game that I played a day ago. I think it was yesterday. Yeah, that sounds right. So, uh, it's still mostly fresh in my mind. It was recorded then. It is being given commentary. Now, today. Looks like I'm spawning in the bottom right. Given that it's a one versus one map, that means that he is certainly spawning in the top left. We require more minerals. So I think more than anything, I want to call attention to something. I, I do this fairly often. Uh, I want to call attention to uh, intelligence and awareness. So, uh, scouting, in a word in StarCraft 2, using a StarCraft buzzword, I want to call attention to scouting. And I, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna cast from replay another game I played recently right after this, uh, in which scouting also played a huge role in the way the game played out. Uh, my scouting plays a huge role in this game though, so um, I think I'm gonna try to uh, focus on and speak on that above all else. So why don't we go ahead and start from the ground up? In Zerg vs. Protoss, uh, there are two common Protoss openings. One involving getting a gateway first, going up to a cyber core, and then uh, whipping out a nexus thereafter. Another involving getting a forge first, and then a nexus, and then going into the gateway in the cyber core. So uh, the difference between these two is that the forge first, uh, at least in my opinion, is a little bit safer but primarily gets your economy out faster. If they go Forge first, the Nexus comes out faster than if they go Gateway first. However, if they go Gateway first, then their Warp Gate research and their Cyber Core come out faster. The Cyber Core coming out faster means that any potential tech that they want to do can come out faster as well. So the Gateway opening is kind of a tech play. The Forge opening is kind of an economic play. This is probably not news to any of you. I'm sure uh, most of you, at least any of you that aren't Terrans, probably already know this and are fairly familiar with it. Uh, now because of the possibility of Forge first opening, I have gone for a 14 pool that allows me to get a couple Zerglings in the event of a cannon rush, or uh, just to kill the pylon that's going to be used to block my hatchery in some games. None of that happened though, and I can see by my overlord reaching his natural that he's actually not doing a forge opening either, so it's going to be a gateway opening. Um, if he was doing a forge opening, then the forge would be on the low ground down here. There would at least be a pylon on the low ground. I've seen some Protosses do a forge in their base and then put the cannons down later. Um, and I don't know, I guess that would, that would make some of the analysis I'm getting ready to do a little bit invalid, if that were to be the case. Um, but anyway, I got a gas. I got a gas really quick. Uh, normally, if they do a forge first, they're doing an economic play. You want to respond with an economic play. Uh, I would stay off of gas, and I would grab a third base. They go up to two, I go up to three. That keeps me one ahead of them. However, here, he's not going up to two, at least not quickly. If he's doing a gateway opening, then he, he may be planning some kind of uh, gateway pressure uh, before warp gate finishes. He might be planning some kind of expand into gateway pressure after the warp gate finishes, uh, both of which I will probably want Zergling speed for, and both of which are going to come a lot earlier than if he does the uh, same variations of those builds after having gone forge first. They're going to hit earlier, but they're going to be weaker, because again, forge first, bigger economy means bigger bulkier armies. Uh, however, slower as far as the uh, early stages of the game go. So, here I've got two lings. i got two lings really early. I'm going to slip him in. I see that he is taking the natural now. Uh, he's got a gateway out on the natural, and he's uh, getting a nexus. Now, I'm not going to pay the utmost attention to them, but I did give them a move cue around the back of his base, and this is very peculiar. He pulled a lot of workers off the line, and here's the scouting. Beautiful, beautiful bit of intel. 
Um, so even if I wouldn't have seen the Twilight Council, just seeing him pull a bunch of workers off the mineral line and try to stop a Zergling from getting around the back of the mineral line seems a little sketch. That's, that's costly. You don't, Protoss doesn't do that. You don't stop a Zergling from scouting what you're doing. If you're doing a standard build, you don't really care if he sees what you're doing, and you do care about the minerals you would lose if you use that many probes to go jerk around for a minute. So, uh, even if I just saw that, I'd be a little bit worried. But I saw something more. I saw a Twilight Council. That was a very fast Twilight Council. If you think about a six-gate push that would come on two bases, he's going to get uh, the two base up, He's going to get some probes on it, and then he's going to have to have warp gate research in about six gates. Um, if you think a one base four gate can hit at about six minutes. So a two base six gate would hit at, uh, let's say, um, eight-ish, 8.30 maybe even. Uh, it might even be a little bit later than that. Uh, my timings aren't the cleanest. So uh, possibilities for his use of the Twilight Council. If he was doing big gateway pressure, it could be blank. Sure, he could use the Twilight Council to get Blink, but he's not really going to do that unless he can do like a six gate pressure. Because the six gate would come out so late, it wouldn't make sense to get Blink this early. That's that's crazy early for Blink. That's some misappropriation of resources. Uh, so other uses, would it be charge? Uh, same case. It's almost the exact same situation as Blink. You don't want charge unless you have a lot of gateway units. You don't want Blink unless you have a lot of gateway units. You don't get gateway units this fast by any means. You would get all the gateways first. You would start building up the army first. And then you would get Blink and you would time Blink or charge to finish right as the push was happening. You wouldn't time it this early. That Twilight Council was finished as well. So you've seen my provisions. I'm babbling on a little bit about the possibilities. Uh, but what I'm boiling this down to is that there's really only one possibility for a Twilight Council that early, and that is a plan to go Dark Templar. I've thrown a Spore Crawler up at my natural, uh, I've gotten a pretty fast lair here. Um, I'm actually delaying my upgrades. I don't have any evolution chambers yet. I'm pouring my gas into other places first. Uh, I now have Overseers in a couple different places, and I'm getting ready to go scout his third base. So if he wants to use Dark Templars, a lot of times any offensive play, especially tech-based offensive plays, will occupy your opponent, and they make for great windows to put an expansion out behind you. And uh, so if he was planning on doing a Dark Templar build, whether he does it or not, he may also be planning to expand into a third base. And it looks like that is the case. Uh, we see a Hallucinated Phoenix back here. He's going to get a couple Force Fields off on some Lings. Ah, unideal to lose that many Lings, but it wasn't a... It wasn't all the lings, and it did cause him to use some force fields. Um, so he's got the third up. Now, I've got a Roach Warren. Uh, I actually put down my two evolution chambers to go ahead and get the double upgrade started. But I also have a third base, and overall my saturation is looking pretty decent. Um, I've got two base saturated pretty perfectly, a little over in the main even. Um, just now starting the 2-2 two -two there, or the little 1-1, one -one, I'm sorry, uh, the two upgrades. Uh, I've got a couple drones on the third, so I've got more income than he does, at least until this base of his finishes. Now, you'll note that no DTs ever came out. Just me seeing that, DTs are a high-risk, high-reward play. That means that the risk of you losing the DTs without them doing any damage is high. However, if they are not caught and they go on to do damage, they almost always do a lot of damage. So a lot of times, you'll see a Protoss uh, elect not to do a DT push if he thinks it's been... Uh, if he thinks it's been scouted. He won't do a DT timing at all. So I saw that Twilight Council early. He f knows that I saw that Twilight Council. He was probably face palming as my Zergling ran around the back of his base. He decides, I'm just not going to do it. I don't want to invest resources and have him hard counter it. Because those are going to be resources lost. I'm just going to play defensive and expand to a third. I like that play. And I like that he is attempting to get Photon Cannons up here. And he's spending plenty of money on them. However, my timing is just too good, and I'm getting just enough of what I need to make this a really nasty timing for him to deal with. Now, he did go ahead and put down the Photon Overcharge, so he's got 60 seconds of a huge cannon on that Nexus, which is a pain in the ass for me. Um, but I'm not going to be deterred. I've got a lot of roaches out here. They've got roach speed. Uh, I don't think 1-1 one, one is finished yet. No, it's not. It's probably still about 30 seconds off. Um, I've got a lot of Overlords up there, though, and I've got a few more in the cooker. Matter of fact, I think those were all roaches as well. Uh, I'm going to go in, though. And everything I've seen thus far is going to make for a perfect timing. I've spotted everything he's doing. I've read everything about his build. And I'm getting him here perfectly to just make him have a bad day. And there you have a nice clean game. 
So the scouting in that was incredibly simple. It was literally just two zerglings at a point where I knew his wall wouldn't be up, at a point where I knew a cannon wouldn't be finished, he'd be dealing with me, uh, dealing with my scouting with uh, a zealot and a stalker at most. Might not even have that. A lot of Protoss will cut even that. Uh, so I just got to get in, I got to see if he's taking both gases, I got to see, you know, what's going on in there, and I saw just a beautiful little nugget of information. And it allowed me to basically control the flow of the rest of the game. When I spotted his third going down, I knew uh, exactly how to jump into action. So cool, all that's fair and well and all that good stuff. Uh, this next game is going to be a ZVZ and we're actually going to uh, talk a little bit more about reading than about uh, specifically seeing something, scouting by visual verification. We're going to talk about uh, estimating what your opponent could or could not be doing. That's going to be it for this video though folks, so thank you all for watching and please stay tuned for more. Bye-bye.